The last book ended with the big plot twist that Darius is the son of Steve and Darren's sister Annie. Annie hasn't seen Steve in years, which is probably for the best. I can't help but imagine how dramatic it would have been if Annie had been revealed as Steve's loving queen. That would have been a cool twist at the end of the series. Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. Darren and friends take Darius back home. They tell Annie all about the vampire wars. Annie and Darius are sent away to safety, where they're never heard from again. Before they leave, Darren gives his vampire blood to Darius. That way Darius will grow up to be a vampire like Darren. Not a vampanese like Steve. The blooding process is nearly fatal. Darren will have seizures for days until he fully recovers. Between this and last book's vampire puberty, Darren is in no condition to be fighting anyone. He has no choice. Steve and his vampanese army have the Cirque du Freak captured in a stadium. Human police officers are standing guard outside, ready to help the vampanese at a moment's notice. Darren and his companions enter the stadium. Steve wants to have a big one-on-one -on -one duel with Darren in front of everyone. Vancha fears treachery and advises against it, so Darren refuses. Steve tries to force a duel by using Debbie as a hostage. RV refuses to go along with his plan. He doesn't want any more innocent people to die. A large battle breaks out. The circus performers do a great job fighting the Vampanese. Outside the stadium, Alice and Debbie's army of homeless people stop the police from interfering. Many homeless people join the battle, and the Vampanese soon find themselves greatly outnumbered. I thought it was a little odd that there are no vampires here. It's the final battle of the series, and the vampires aren't even an afterthought. Vancha and Darren chase Steve and Ganon to the forest, where their battle continues. Darren is now in such bad shape he has trouble standing upright. His left arm is quickly rendered useless. Vancha does most of the fighting. Ganon kills Vancha. RV knocks Ganon unconscious, and Steve kills RV. Now it's just Darren and Steve. Darren is a minute or two away from unconsciousness. Steve could win by doing nothing. They have a knife fight in an underpass. Darren gets the upper hand in the battle when he's stopped by a sudden seizure. Steve stabs Darren and gloats for some time, which is a mistake. It gives Darren enough time to gather his energy for a final fatal attack. As Steve dies, Mr. Tiny comes forward. Mr. Tiny reveals he's secretly the father of both Steve and Darren. He's been manipulating them for their entire lives, setting them against each other for his own amusement. Now that Darren's won, Mr. Tiny is excited to turn him into the Lord of the Shadows, who will conquer the world. Darren thinks of a way to escape his destiny. He purposely gives Steve a chance to stab him one last time. Both Steve and Darren die, so neither of them becomes the Lord of the Shadows. In the final 90 pages of the book, Darren is trapped in the Lake of Souls, with nothing but his memories, for hundreds of thousands of years. Eventually, Ivana pulls him out. She says there are dragons in the future, because humans created dragons using dinosaur DNA. Even though there are at least six movies which clearly explain why cloning dinosaurs is a terrible idea. Ivana explains that time travel does not affect major events in history. If a time traveler killed a major historical figure, the universe would create another person to take their place and do the exact same things, so history would not change. Ivana just made a deal with her father. She's agreed to have vampire babies. Mr. Tiny thinks that will force the vampire war to continue, but Ivana has tricked him. She's having twins, a vampire baby with Vancha and a Vampanese baby with Ganon. She believes the half-vampire, half-Vampanese twins will reunite the warring clans. As part of the deal, Mr. Tiny has agreed to make Darren into a little person. 
Darren is sent back in time to the very first book of the series. He scares his younger self away from the Cirque du Freak. Now Darren won't steal Madame Octa and become a half-vampire. Ivana played another trick on her father. She hid Darren's diaries inside his robes. The new Darren Shan uses these diaries to write the Cirque du Freak series. A real-life vampire is bound to read one of these books, or the manga, that will help end the Vampire War too. The end. Post-book follow-up. I saw a lot of angry reviews that were upset with the way this series ended. It's not too different from saying, the whole thing never happened. It probably would have been better received if this reset the timeline ending had been two to three chapters long. As I said, this section takes up 90 pages, which is a fairly long time to have Darren interact with no one besides Ivana and then Mr. Tiny. If you wanted closure for any characters besides those two, then you're kind of out of luck. I think the starting section of this book went on for too long, too. It's 70 pages before Darren goes to the big battle. I did enjoy the material with Annie and Darius, but it's a surprisingly large chunk of the book spent on wrapping up last book's cliffhanger before getting the story started for real. In previous reviews, I complained that Darren doesn't participate in big battle scenes. That is still true here. It's a shame the movie series didn't catch on, because it would have been nice to see this battle on the big screen. It's fairly cinematic. Darren doesn't do any real fighting until the one-on-one -on -one battle with Steve at the very end. Now that I've read the last trilogy, I think I can safely disagree with the people who said Book 10 is essential to the series as a whole. It's not, and I would kind of be willing to sacrifice half of Book 10 for more resolution here. Overall, it felt like an appropriate, if disappointing, way to end the Cirque du Freak series. This sure isn't the way I expected the series to go, based on the first trilogy, which is more like Goosebumps stories than the introduction to an epic vampire war with time travel. I give Cirque du Freak number 12, Sons of Destiny, a 7 out of 10.